In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. Today I'm with Dr. Ulrich Keilholz. He's the director of the Charité Comprehensive Cancer Center here in Berlin. Thanks for inviting me into your clinic. Good morning. Good morning. Immunotherapy seems to be the next big thing in cancer medicine. Could you please shortly explain what it is? Immunotherapy has been a big thing several times, but ultimately fa always failed. Okay. But the basis is understood quite well. That is that tumor cells carry mutations. And tumor tissue is not a healthy tissue, so there's apoptosis, necrosis of tumor cells, and the other... So it's dying of... It, it's, yes, yeah. some tumor cells always die. Right. Most stay healthy, but some die. And they are taken up by dendritic cells, the professional antigen-presenting cells of the immune system. And those dissect the mutations of the tumor cells and present them to the immune effector cells. And they get activated and in turn, re return can kill other tumor cells. That is the ideal situation, and that may cause some immune surveillance if new tumor cells develop. Right. But in every patient with a cancer, this system has ultimately failed. Okay, so, so and what does immunotherapy do? So for a long time, we used to stimulate the immune system, either by helping the afferent way, inducing immunity by cancer vaccines, or by stimulating the efferent system by interleukins by herbal extracts like mistletoe extracts and, and stuff like that. And this never really worked. It always worked in some patients but not in many. And now we understood why the problem is there because the immune system has very efficient breaks. And those breaks are important to prevent autoimmunity. So is there a normal patient with no tumor, those, those breaks slowing down uh, or diminishing the immune system is very important because otherwise the, the body would fight itself? Yes, it would right. cause immune reactions against the gut, against the lung, against endocrine glands and, and skin. and So a lot of autoimmunity would, would develop. But in cancer it's a totally different story because you don't need those it's breaks. It's basically the same story, just the tumor cells abuse the system and use the same molecules that prevent the destruction of normal tissue, preventing the destruction of themselves and put those breaks on the immune system. And, and that is important to, over, that is impossible to overstimulate. So, so and immunotherapy fights those breaks? Right? Now, the new development has been to develop antibodies directly against those breaks that we can specifically and temporarily uh, take out the effect of the breaks, either in the afferent way that allows the development of immunity if there is no basic immunotherapy, Im immunity. Uh, that has the risk of autoimmunity, of course, but that is uh, temporary and also we can cope with it. And the other antibodies which are very effective, surprisingly effective, are uh, antibodies that target the breaks that prevent the execution of immunity. And that has been powerful in a number of cancers and also, you can use both together, which is a bit dangerous because autoimmunity will develop. You have to cope with it, but it's very effective. So, so the uh, most feared side effects would be an autoimmune disease or an autoimmune reaction. So, so what's it like for the patient? It can cause inflammation of the bowel, of the lungs, of the skin and endocrine glands, but we have learned to detect that early on right. and treat it without compromising the anti-tumor effects. And at how big are those anti-tumor effects? Partially it's dramatic, so in metastatic melanoma, for example, where we have seen effectivity of chemotherapy in less than 20% of patients, we can now have a long-lasting effect in up to 70% of patients, which is a major step forward and that is always long-lasting. But also in many other tumors, we do see long-lasting remissions and we have to sort out now which molecule to use best in which situation, but the effect overall is quite dramatic. When we think about chemotherapy, patients often complain about side effects like nausea or weight loss. And how do those chemotherapeutic drugs induce those side effects? Well, chemotherapeutic drugs are poisons and they kill fast growing cells. Tumor cells are fast growing cells, at least most of them, and therefore they are ex effective. But also normal cells are growing to some extent, the cells of the hairs the cells of the blood system, they are regrowing every time, and so there are inherent side effects on these cell types that we cannot avoid.
but then also the gastrointestinal tract reacts and the only way the gastrointestinal tract reacts is by nausea. Okay. So we just spoke about immunotherapy and chemotherapy mm -hmm. and are there any other new therapeutic options on the horizon? Well, the other modality that is developing is the molecularly targeted therapies where we have identifiable molecular aberrations in the tumor cells that drive the proliferation of tumor cells. If we find those, we can inhibit many of those by specific drugs. Mm -hmm. You can tell us where. Well, if a mutation causes the proliferation of tumor cells, it's a driving mutation, it has a certain uh, pattern and we can address that by specific drug that blocks this driving effect. It does not work on tumor cells that are caused by dysfunction mutations where protein is dysfunction because a dysfunctional protein you cannot detect by, by a drug because it's not working. But if in those tumors where we have driver mutation, there we have the chance to develop specific drugs or test specific drugs and some are licensed uh, which we can use to treat those patients. I recently read a story about American scientists in the media uh, that they developed a method they, that they could reprogram cancer cells into mm -hmm. normal working body cells. So, so what do you think about that? That is easy and that we have already used in the 80s. Yeah. But basically you can do that in the test tube and you can hit about 70 to 80 percent of tumor cells and silence those. In a patient that doesn't help because if only one percent of the tumor cell survives it will regrow within a few weeks and then, then there's no effect. Okay. If, if you try to look into the future what kind of therapies await us or what, what's the best strategy to fight cancer? There's not this magic therapy. What is important is to use all modalities we have. We used to have three modalities that was surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy and now we have five of them. The new ones are the molecularly targeted therapy and also the modern immunotherapy. So, so on a practical point of view, if a patient comes to you into your clinic with some kind of tumor, how do you decide which kind of therapy you, you, you offer them? For most of the tumors we have standard therapies and we know the effect. And if the effect is not satisfactory, we start sequencing of the tumor to see whether we find driving mutations. Then it can become complicated because some of those driver mutations we can address by drugs we have in our armamentarium, some we cannot address at this time. Then we need to do more research. And also the other way is of course to use the modern immunotherapies and this is the decision we have to take for every single patient. Dr. Carlos, thank you so much for inviting me into your clinic today. Thank you.